July 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezra chapters 3 and 4 from the Old Testament. When the seventh month arrived and the Israelites were living in their towns, the people assembled in Jerusalem. Then Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and his priestly colleagues, and Zerubbabel, son of Sheatiel, and his colleagues started to build the altar of the God of Israel, so they could offer burnt offerings on it as required by the law of Moses, the man of God. They established the altar on its foundations, even though they were in terror of the local peoples, and they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord, both the morning and the evening offerings. They observed the festival of temporary shelters as required and offered the proper number of daily burnt offerings according to the requirement for each day. Afterward, they offered the continual burnt offerings and those for the new moons and those for all the holy assemblies of the Lord and all those that were being voluntarily offered to the Lord. From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. However, the Lord's temple was not at that time established. So they provided money for the masons and carpenters and food, beverages and olive oil for the people of Sidon and Tyre so that they would bring cedar timber from Lebanon to the seaport at Joppa, in accord with the edict of King Cyrus of Persia. In the second year after they had come to the temple of God in Jerusalem, in the second month, Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josadak, initiated the work along with the rest of their associates, the priests and the Levites, and all those who were coming to Jerusalem from the exile. They appointed the Levites, who were at least 20 years old, to take charge of the work on the Lord's temple. So Jeshua appointed both his sons and his relatives, Cadmiel and his sons, the sons of Yehuda, to take charge of the workers in the temple of God, along with the sons of Henadad, their sons, and their relatives, the Levites. When the builders established the Lord's temple, the priests ceremonially attired, and with their clarions, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with their symbols, stood to praise the Lord according to the instructions left by King David of Israel. With antiphonal response they sang, Praising and glorifying the Lord, for he is good, his loyal love toward Israel is forever. All the people gave a loud shout as they praised the Lord when the temple of the Lord was established. Many of the priests, the Levites, and the leaders, older people who had seen with their own eyes the former temple while it was still established, were weeping loudly and many others raised their voice in a joyous shout. People were unable to tell the difference between the sound of joyous shouting and the sound of the people's weeping. For the people were shouting so loudly that the sound was heard a long way off. When the enemies of Judah and Benjamin learned that the former exiles were building a temple for the Lord God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and the leaders and said to them, Let us help you build, for like you we seek your God, and we have been sacrificing to him from the time of King Ezerhaddon of Assyria, who brought us here. But Zerubbabel, Jeshua, and the rest of the leaders of Israel said to them, You have no right to help us build the temple of our God. We will build it by ourselves for the Lord God of Israel, just as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Then the local people began to discourage the people of Judah and to dishearten them from building. They were hiring advisors to oppose them so as to frustrate their plans throughout the time of King Cyrus of Persia until the reign of King Darius of Persia. At the beginning of the reign of Ahasuerus, they filed an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. And during the reign of Artaxerxes, Bishlam, Mithridath, Tabiel, and the rest of their colleagues wrote to King Artaxerxes of Persia. This letter was first written in Aramaic, but then translated. Aramaic Rehum, the commander, and Shimshay, the scribe, wrote a letter concerning Jerusalem to King Artaxerxes as follows. From Rehum, the commander, Shimshai the scribe, and the rest of their colleagues, the judges, the rulers, the officials, the secretaries, 
the Erechites, the Babylonians, the people of Susa, that is the Elamites, and the rest of nations whom the great and noble Ashurbanipal deported and settled in the cities of Samaria and other places in Trans-Euphrates. This is a copy of the letter they sent to him. To King Artaxerxes, from your servants in Trans-Euphrates, now let the king be aware that the Jews who came up to us from you have gone to Jerusalem. They are rebuilding that rebellious and odious city. They are completing its walls and repairing its foundations. Let the king also be aware that if this city is built and its walls are completed, no more tax, custom, or toll will be paid and the royal treasury will suffer loss. In light of the fact that we are loyal to the king, and since it does not seem appropriate to us that the king should sustain damage, we are sending the king this information, so that he may initiate a search of the records of his predecessors, and discover in those records that this city is rebellious and injurious to both kings and providences, producing internal revolts from long ago. It is for this very reason that this city was destroyed. We therefore are informing the king that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, you will not retain control of this portion of Trans-Euphrates. The king sent the following response. To Rehum, the commander, Shimshai, the scribe, and the rest of their colleagues who live in Samaria and other parts of Trans-Euphrates. Greetings. The letter you sent to us has been translated and read in my presence. So I gave orders, and it was determined that this city, from long ago, has been engaging in insurrection against kings. It has continually engaged in rebellion and revolt. Powerful kings have been over Jerusalem, who ruled throughout the entire Trans-Euphrates, and who were the beneficiaries of tribute, custom, and toll. Now give orders that these men cease their work, and that this city not be rebuilt until such time as I so instruct. Exercise appropriate caution so that there is no negligence in this matter. Why should danger increase to the point that kings sustain damage? Then, as soon as the copy of the letter from King Artaxerxes was read, in the presence of Rehum, Shimshai the scribe, and their colleagues, they proceeded promptly to the Jews in Jerusalem and stopped them with threat of armed force. So the work on the temple of God in Jerusalem came to a halt. It remained halted until the second year of the reign of King Darius of Persia. God, I feel like your people today. <laughs> I am so exhausted fighting against the words of men. I know I have your strength. I know I have your power. I know that all these things strengthen me. I know that. But there's just some days when it just seems exhausting. That just like in this letter, a few right words can turn a human's ear with his ego intact <laughs> and cause him to make incredibly wrong choices for what is going on currently and what will happen in the future. I'm dealing with this right now with someone who's making wrong choices even for what they believe is all the right reasons and is causing incredible damage to a lot of situations. And God, I, I don't know what to do. I take that back. I do know what to do. I pray to you. I turn it over to you. But there's times like this when I just feel helpless. And I'm sure your people at that time are like, ah, we came all the way back from captivity. We're supposed to build this temple. And now we have all these frustrating people around us trying to stop us. And God, we've been through so much already. Please, can't anything just be simple and easy? And that's where our faith in you and your plan and your will has to come in. We have to know that you are bigger than everything that we experience. We have to know and believe and have faith that you want what is better for us than anything that we could possibly hope for. And we have to know that you are watching over everything that we go through 
and are fully aware and fully in control. I don't know how people without that faith make it God. On days like today, where everything is just really hard and really frustrating, at least I have you to turn to. At least I know to turn to you in prayer. At least I know that this is temporary because I get to spend eternity in heaven worshiping and glorifying you. But what about the people who don't have that, God? What about the people who are like the Old Testament people who were never forgiven, who carried around their burdens constantly, who never had any rest from anything of this world, who had no peace that passes any understanding inside of their heart? God, I just pray for everyone today who is going through something. And that seems to be all of us at some given point in our, in our lives. That we will rely on you and rely on your strength. And most importantly, rely on your plan. The plan that is always better than whatever path we see immediately in front of us. God, I ask for reassurance that of the knowledge that this is temporal, that that this is such a fleeting moment in our lives, that our frustration, our anger, our impatience is so temporary. And the situation that we've made big in our life is really not that big at all. God, help us put things into perspective. I do know that the temple does get to be built. <laughs> and so all the frustrations that were happening at that time, eventually you took care of them. God, allow us to be in that place where we can rest in the assurance of your control and your sovereignty. In your son's name I pray. Amen.